Welcome to the Old State House Museum Collections podcast. The Old State House is located in Little Rock, Arkansas, and it's been operating as a museum since 1949. We have a large collection of artifacts. Our first focus is Arkansas politics because we were the original state capital for Arkansas, and uh, we also have collections of music relating to Arkansas history, musicians from Arkansas. We have uh, the Arkansas State Police Collection. We have a collection from the Department of Arkansas Corrections. We have a large Civil War collection. And we have a, a, a collection of artifacts dealing with our current exhibit, Arkansas, Arkansas, a state and its reputation. And that is the topic of this podcast, our new exhibit. Arkansas, Arkansas is based off a book written by Brooks Blevins. Called Arkansas, Arkansas. Called Arkansas, Arkansas, funny enough. The book was written based on original research, which was commissioned by the Old State House Museum. And uh, the, the book takes a look at historically how the image of Arkansas has developed through the years and uh, various changes and uh, contributing factors to what many perceive to be a negative image of the state. So the exhibit focuses on uh, the very earliest creation of the image of the hillbilly in Arkansas. We were originally known as the Bear State. And it also follows Arkansas well into 20th century until modern day about how our uh, reputation as a, a backwards rural area uh, has affected us. It's also about how our, we as Arkansans have interacted with that image and that reputation. In the 20th century, we really see a lot of entertainers uh, and various people in pop culture capitalize on this negative image through Beverly Hillbillies, uh, folk music, and so on, and to a uh, really get deep into this and, and go straight to the source. We uh, interviewed Brooks Blevins over the phone last week, and the following audio is a result of that interview. What really made me uh, work on the book was uh, uh, in 2002 when my, when my book Hill Folks came out, and, and that book dealt a lot with uh, the imagery and stereotypes of those arcs things like that, uh, the old state house asked me to, uh, to serve as the guest curator for the exhibit that became Arkansas, Arkansas. That was eight years ago. Uh, it was a long process, obviously. When I first started the research, I, what I really expected to find was uh, just a big stack of really negative trails of Arkansas and hillbilly this and redneck that, the sort of stuff that I guess growing up in Arkansas I'd been conditioned to expect that I would find. Uh, and then I was surprised, I guess, to, when I actually started reading novels and travel accounts and short stories and uh, listening to old radio programs and all that kind of stuff that uh, at least half, if not more than half, of the stuff that I was coming across was actually... Uh, painting Arkansas and Arkansas people in a positive light. And uh, and so that's how I ended up, after I'd already started doing the research, research with this uh, new thesis, which was kind of the dual image. And uh, it was something that I didn't expect to do. But I think from a historian standpoint, when you end up changing your focus uh, based on your research, it, it kind of tells you, well, that you're re reacting to your sources. Uh, you're not... Uh, stuck with uh, your preconceptions going into the project. What's everybody moving so fast for, Ebert? Seems kind of like Esmeralda done hit it again, Paul. Do tell. Yeah. Well, the, uh, that, that dual image arises uh, almost from the very beginning, uh, and, it, and it happens with those early travel writers. That, those were really the, the first accounts of Arkansas and Arkansas people in the, in the 19th century uh, were, were travel accounts. And uh, some of them were tended to be uh, quite negative, like Henry Rowe Schoolcraft, whose travel account is the earliest one that we refer to uh, most of what he has to say is very negative. He's uh, Schoolcraft is a New Yorker, uh, college educated. He's a scientist and uh, kind of an enlightened fellow. And as you might imagine, when he 
ventures into the wilds of of the Ozarks, he's he's uh, off put by the the rude, uh, uncouth people that he comes into contact with, and the fact that they're wearing buckskins. And uh, he mentions that even the women and children uh, don't know anything except talking about bear hunting. But then there are other travelers who take a, a more positive view. The best known one is uh, Friedrich Gerstaker. And Gerstaker uh, is a, another foreigner. He's a, he's a German, uh, a young guy from a middle class family. But uh, what sets him apart from Schoolcraft is his perspective. Gerstaker comes to the United States with this uh, romantic uh, mindset. He finds these very same people in Arkansas, these these backwoodsmen, uh, both in the Delta and in the Ozarks. But instead of being repulsed by them, he's uh, intrigued by them and just thinks they're great. He likes the fact that they're uh, that they're backwoodsmen, and he thinks that there's a certain natural nobility in them that he doesn't find in other parts of the country. And so that's that's really that becomes the divide that kind of sticks with the Arkansas image throughout 200 years. I was aiming to mosey down to see Esmeralda. What you want, Ethan? Ain't you gonna give me a lift up? Can't you see I'm in a hurry? The Big Bear of Arkansas is a short story that comes out in the early 1840s, and it's it's by Thomas Banks Thorpe, uh, who actually lived in Louisiana at the time, but was uh, from up north. Throughout the the years, I had uh, I'll admit I had never actually sat down and read this story until I started research on this project, and the sort of uh, popular take on the Big Bear of Arkansas was was that it was this negative image of Arkansas, that it perpetuated stereotypes and even established stereotypes because it was such an old story and that, you know, there was nothing really positive in this for Arkansas. And uh, and then when I sat down and actually read the story, uh, I came away with a completely different view of it. Uh, Jim Doggett, who is the protagonist of the story and who is the Arkansas bear hunter, is this uh, rough and rugged uh, frontiersman who is obviously uneducated and uh, uncultured, but who uh, tells his story aboard a Mississippi River steamboat and these more uh, high-class passengers uh, listen in rapture to, to his story of, of hunting this kind of mythical Moby Dick type bear through, through the wilderness of Arkansas. And it's obvious that in uh, Thorpe's telling of the story, uh, he had a great appreciation for the character of Jim Doggett. And Doggett was this kind of romantic, early 19th century character who was close to the land and was authentic. And he was, uh, in many ways, he's, he's uh, a 19th century version of Jed Clampett. He's a guy who's obviously a wily, uh, smart guy, even though he has no formal education. And, uh, and at his core, he's, you know, he's a, he's a true, even sort of noble character. Uh, and people read this story through different perspectives and uh, different lenses and, and come away from the story with completely different interpretations of what Thorpe was trying to say and who the character Jim Doggett is and, and what that means for Arkansas's image. And uh, to me, it's, it's clearly a, a positive interpretation of that that Arkansas frontier 